Okay, so um, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the last breakout session of Connell 2022, uh, which centres on the theme of new synergies and transformations for library collections. We have four lightning talks as part of this session, the first of which will be delivered by David Meehan, who is the Associate Director for Special Collections and Archives at DCU Library. David has over 25 years experience in Irish libraries and is the chair of Connell's Regulatory Affairs and Subcommittee. A regulatory Affairs Subcommittee, apologies. Sorry, I knew I'd get that one wrong. <laughs> I should have just used the acronym. Um, so David will speak on digital copyright trends, implications for collections and services. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. It's a very good turnout. I was half afraid it was going to be really super sparse and it was going to be like puppet show supported by Spinal Tap. <laughs> if that's a reference that off you get, uh, I hope you like my new direction. Uh, and that's the first minute of my presentation, I'm gone, wiped out. Um, so yeah, the title, do I, yes, here we go. There's the title, Digitize or Be Damned, uh, ebook options for search libraries. And what that kind of really means, a lot of us know what uh, digitization for, you know, with the, the DCS that we were doing throughout COVID is. But there's a whole other world of uh, ebooks, uh, <laughs> books that, that are not provided or available digitally. And this is really, uh, and the, the law on them is a little bit unsure. And I'm hoping today to bring some clarity to that, to that particular uh, conundrum. So there we go. The, you know, I'm not going to say anything about ebooks generally. There's some of them out there, but they don't cover the, 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 the full gamut of what we have in our print collections. And there's still demand for access to uh, print materials that aren't available uh, digitally. You know, things that suit price as well, where you do, you do have them, or restrictions on uh, limitations on, on access. So how can, you know, th this gap that I'm talking about, and it is a big, big gap, I won't give an exact number, but just say, just say I was to say 90% of your print collections have no digital availability, just let's take that as a number. How can we legally uh, uh, fill those gaps? There are four well-rehearsed options that are there in law that we can do. I just outlined them to you just to, uh, as an aid memoir to, so we know what our terms of reference are. One is copying for, pres for preservation, a very much an internal thing uh, within, within libraries. Uh, that's one, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a legal bedrock, you can, you can do that kind of copying. Second one is copying for access on dedicated terminals. I don't does anybody really do that, but it is there, it's provided for, so you can digitally copy something, put it on a terminal in your library, and people can go and consult it. Uh, then another one, copying for access to orphan works. Uh, this is one provided for by, by you know, European legislation implemented in Irish law, but in, in some ways kind of like a dead letter. It's uh, been a bit of a, a bit of administrative burdens attached to it, and it really hasn't taken off in the way people thought. Uh, but again, it's a formal uh, 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 reason for, 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 uh, for digitizing uh, print works. And then finally, modifying for visually impaired and uh, print disabled. Some libraries may do that. That might, might also be function taken over by the, the institute itself. So the observation of that, they're all specific purpose exceptions for very, very specific goals or for very specific types of items. Um, and they're subject to clear limitations. They're for preservation, for use in on-site terms, or they're for a format like an orphan work, or they're for specific user type. They do not, and this is the, the shortcoming, they do not enable general extensive online access to full text works digitized from own collections, which is something you might think you would be entitled to do in some form. So, do we have options to fill that very, very large gap, you know, the notional 90%? Uh, the answer is yes, and there's in, <laughs> just to kind of, uh, because we're talking about law here, most probably. Uh, and uh, the most probably I'll go on to explain to you. Uh, so the, the reason why I say most probably is because there are developments that have taken place largely outside of Ireland, but also in the international context too. Anybody who uh, we're keeping tabs on what uh, IFLA write about controlled digital lending would know about that concept. Uh, you may not have heard of cases in Europe. What's more important is uh, the cases you may not have heard of that have taken place in Europe, which have established uh, principles around that. So, but before go getting to that, it's important to recognize that the European Union, and which creates a lot of law, which b binds us, uh, uh, recognizes that there is a new digital environment. This goes back right to, uh, you know, going back 20 years uh, to the so-called Information Society Directive and then to the, 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 the rental uh, and lending rights directive, which applies to public uh, uh, libraries. They, they recognize economic realities and economic developments such as new forms of exploitation. It's like the world changing before our eyes when we, you know, anybody might have started uh, work in the year 2000 or started paying attention in the year 2000 to, to digital matters, would have seen like the idea of the hybrid library things hoving into view. Uh, and this is recognized as being a direction happening in, 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 in actual European law. And 
this is kind of this formula that appears in legislation has. I'm, I'm keeping this as simple as I can because I know law wrecks a lot of people's heads. Uh, these, uh, this simple principle has been taken uh, up by the European Court of Justice and run with in two particular cases, in a number of cases, but two particularly important ones. One is uh, a German case, uh, TU Darmstadt. Darmstadt is a, a city somewhere in Germany, and TU is a technical university. And uh, what they did was uh, they, uh, they took a, a, a textbook you know, and they digitized it and made, available, made it available through a, digi uh, a digital terminal, uh, sorry, through a dedicated terminal. And uh, they were challenged on this. And uh, they were vindicated. And basically what the court said was that you've got the right to do what you're doing, but also you've got the right to digitize material in order to do it. They understood the, the nature of you know, the reality of digitizing and then making something available uh, through, through, a, through a, you know, back then it would have been a CRT, I'm guessing. Um, and uh, le then the second, if you like, the more widely known case is the, 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 the VOB case. It's, I'm not going to say it's a very, very long Dutch word, or it might even be three very long Dutch words. Uh, but uh, it was essentially a, a, a public library wanting to make uh, material available uh, uh, for lending digitally. And they went ahead and they did it, and they were challenged. And uh, then the court basically said, the simplest way of putting it is the court said, lending carried out digitally is indisputably a new form of exploitation. Copyright, copyright must adapt to the new economic uh, developments. So that really is as clear a statement as you can make. That like, 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 well, actually, go on to my next slide. Uh, the headline impact. Uh, EU law explicitly, explicitly recognized that for controlled digital lending, new forms of, of exploitation include print digital and remote access. Uh, the format and place of access is, is irrelevant. So like these, these kind of, an e-book is a book, you know, a book is an e-book, an e-book is a book. There's no difference really in reality and concept. It can be loaned in the same manner as a print book, okay? And that's, but the, 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 that's the simplest way you can reduce the formula to. Um, if I can just go back, I just want kind of maybe one little footnote on this, that that particular case applies to public libraries, uh, because it's just, legal cases always kind of rest on the facts that presented to them, and it was coming out of a public library scenario, but also it's important to note that the legislation they were considering was the, the Rental Rights Directive, and that means that they have, you know, public libraries have to compensate uh, rights holders, as it's, it's a kind of a, a regime, if you like, and it makes an economic sense. So it doesn't apply explicitly to education, uh, higher education institutions. So um, if you've absorbed that, uh, the, the idea of controlled digital lending, you can lend a book, an e-book, like it's a book, OK? Um, maybe develop just a little bit further that there's also that TU Darnstadt thing. If you apply the similar principles that technology is changing, three minutes, OK, technology is changing, uh, so um, uh, uh, wh wh what can you do with dedicated terminals? Like obviously, uh, CRT is no longer so modern. Internet access is, 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 the, is the, the, the principle to be applied there. So, okay, um, I'm going to skip through that one because there's a lot of uh, text on that. You'll be getting the slides, you can consult yourselves. Um, uh, but if I could say any digital exploitation, whether it's lending or access to, to a terminal or whatever, or uh, whatever, is, uh, must, be, must replicate normal patterns of access. So the realistic implications for kind of libraries, lending in Ireland, analog or digital. So uh, we've got our Section 58 in the Irish uh, Copyright Act, which uh, covers lending of copies by educational institutions. This now arguably, I would say, includes uh, uh, digital lending. I don't think, it's, it's hard to argue now that uh, e-books can't be can't fall within that, de within that definition, although it might be tested. It, we might have to argue to do that. Um, so yeah, I, I think this, that's probably the headline point on that. Uh, and similarly, uh, we have provisions in Irish legislation for uh, access to di through digital terminals, to dedicated terminals. And uh, I think that, uh, again, because it's explicit in Irish law, any kind of uh, change in technology that would be to apply to, say, making, you know, substituting uh, say, an iPad off campus for a CRT screen in a dedicated terminal, you know, I think that would apply to us too. Uh, so are there risks? Yes, there are risks. Uh, because like it hasn't been uh, written down explicitly uh, in law for us in Ireland. So if you're risk averse, you might say we're not going to go down that route. But my feeling would be, would be that if you were slightly uh, risk friendly, uh, you, could, you could take the risk like TU Darmstadt did and, and give it a lash and, uh, and probably get away with it because I think we're on pretty safe ground because the trends are going in one direction. Law no longer distinguishes between physical and dis digital formats and uh, analogous controls 
uh, can be, you know, the, the thing about the, the, uh, the, the formula um, that applies to CDL, uh, that, yeah, the, the blow for blow type of thing, uh, that applies uh, and constrains digital lending to make it seem like the same economic effect as print lending. So there are some uh, practical notes here, and I really just kind of picked these out because they're, they're slightly going off at an angle. Um, um, the first one is pretty normal. Digitization for permanent collections for specific online uses is feasible uh, for a number of purposes. For example, that we familiar, we're familiar with, for lending of a work in demand, uh, for textbook revision, and for access to special collections. That'd be something that we would feel we could do normally. And, and I think that that's, that's feasible and, and while not nailed down, I'm confident that we can do all those things without too much trouble. And a particularly interesting one with that German case, um, what they did was they had uh, digitized a book, but that book was available as, uh, time up, thank you. Uh, that book was available uh, uh, also in e-format. And the publisher said, you can't do what you're doing because you can buy the e-book off us. And the court said, no, uh, TU can digitize the book themselves. They don't have to actually take up the offer from the publisher, okay? So uh, that's uh, something to very, very much bear in mind because it indicates the way the thinking is going, that it's very, very much in favor of the way libraries think and operate. Okay, so I could, if, I'd have, if I had two more minutes, I would spend a bit of time on that, but maybe that last point, if you want to take a photograph uh, and mull about, you can ask me later. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, David, and I think we can all appreciate how difficult it is to get your point and points across in such a short period of time, but there will be plenty of time for questions, um, as I'm sure we all would like to pick David's brain on, on certain aspects of his talk. 